Morning. I I just had a thought. Jesus loves his little metaphors. He loves his metaphorical stories as well. Now, I did have a stuffed toy here, and it looked nothing like a dead dog. Hey, what's this? Now, this one here is Midnight. He was born just after midnight. And I caught him chewing on this toy. When I first got it, I thought it's a spider, but even better, it's a bug. Get it fire? Yeah, get it fire. See, that's my girl, that's fire. Got, oh no, it's not fire. That's midnight. He's the one who wants to get it. Midnight wants to get the bug because he was born just after midnight and he wasn't late. And he was born at 3.49, which you can look up in Strong's. It's a bit of a message to the bugs. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to the bugs? Now the Lord sent me to a movie. It was called The Book Club. No, the bookshop. Hello, yes, fire, I'll let you up. It was called the bookshop. I couldn't get through the movie. I had to pull out my red notebox and start writing because the spirit was upon me and I was just getting so much from the Lord. That was in about June or July 2018 when I went up the mountain and I... Gave myself a wee break and went to the movies by the Lord's leading. Now I've told you about my dream that I had after the El Noor Mosque incident. Don't leave the bathroom. And how I saw myself leave the bathroom. To follow a little girl. Now who hasn't seen the enemy broadcasting little girls? Little innocent little girls. Now this little girl came in and jumped in the bathtub. And I followed her out. And in the kitchen were a whole lot of older women gossiping and drinking coffee. Now I think they were drinking tea because that's, the that's the devil's drink, isn't it? Tea, they drink tea with demons. And then I um, heard a sound, we all heard a sound, and we all got let out to watch the parade, but we weren't invited to this parade. We just watched it from, we had to climb up a big structure and watched it from the roadside. And then a couple of lovely ladies that looked very mean, and you know that I call, because the Lord gave me the word, he actually gave me the word, mean, and he calls the religious spirit the mean. And that covers just about everything, even this whole one world religion. And a lot of them are Christians. The Sadducees and the, the Pharisees that Jesus rebuked. I don't know, I always wondered why he put so much effort into rebuking them. I asked him about it. Well, why did you bother rebuking them, Lord? You know, why did you give them the time of day? I mean, they were never a threat to you. They were just going to fall right into your hands and put you on the cross so that you could redeem mankind from the fallen host body system and he said he said he did it he did it for us he did it as an example for us so he could oh so that we could hear oh you're choking on that careful so that we could hear his words of rebuke to the mean to those in the body of Christ and outside of the body of Christ that are religious spirits, the mean. So I'm just, I'm sharing this because everything works for good and even any, everything that the enemy says, we know that the enemy likes to hunt us, but God has turned us into the hunters, so. Hey, this is annoying, can't talk. Just settle down and play. 
So because I got that comment that when I was filming my pups, that one of them was dead, that it was a toy, the Lord just gave me a reminder of the story. So if anyone's done English, and we'll go right back, we'll go right, this is only about, this is English for about a 14 year old, anyone can understand it, the Lord's, the Gospels for the, for the children, it's for the children. That's how simple it is. It confounds the wise. It goes right over their head. So get the DVD out. Watch the book club. I'm just going to go through just a wee English breakdown of the story from the Lord Jesus Christ. So what happened in that story hey and let me remind you just while the oh, I'm not going to start start the story yet let me remind you you see the aggressiveness in these little shih tzus. let me remind you that the Lord showed me as a result of that book shot movie. I put my feet up, I think that's what's distracting them. This is fire, she's a pretty So the Lord showed me as a result of that movie that there's a character in that movie that lives up the hill that everybody goes gossips about. And it's set on an island I think it's on the outskirts of London and Europe somewhere. And there's a character in that movie that everyone gossips about that lives up on a hill. And he's a recluse, and he's a recluse because he's a truther, because he knows the truth about that little town. He knows about the evil that's in their hearts. But because he's always got his eye on what's going on, he noticed a new face, and it was the young lady who went there to open a book shop. There was a lot of resistance in the town to this book shop. But she ended up getting the support of two people, two characters. And the third character was a man, and he was the mean. He even had the black hat, and he betrayed her. Because there was a fourth character who was the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee lived up on the hill as well, but... And she was affluent, and she was the elite. And between her character, which was a Jezebel type, and this fourth character that befriended this lovely lady who started this book shop, they brought her down. They brought her down to the ground. They managed to get rid of this little girl who had been working for her. They managed to make it so that her mother took her away and she would no longer work in the bookshop. And the man on the hill who had befriended her, who had picked up that she had a good heart, who represents Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, whose eyes are everywhere, whose uh, eyes are actually roving the world right now to see whose hearts are towards him. And he went, he invited her, he drew her to his home, he drew her and that's what uh, Jesus said to us, that nobody comes to the Father unless 
sorry, nobody comes to the sun unless the father draws him. And that's exactly what this man on the hill did. And they spent time together up in the house and had a meal and she served him and he served her. And when she came across this Queen Bee and the Ahab, the man who had betrayed her, He went directly to the Jezebel's house. He went directly to the Queen Bee's house. And he petitioned her. He sat across from her. And he gave it to her in a pretty clear way. And he, there was no doubt at all that he knew who she was, what her intentions were. And that she went out purposefully to destroy and ensure that this bookshop no longer existed in the town. There's always got to be a sacrifice, and um, this man on the hill was a sacrifice, because he had a frail heart. Because of the, the wickedness, I suppose, of the... The meeting, because of the wickedness of the interaction. It's almost like his heart grew grew sick and, and on, on the way back from the home and there was no fruit from it. This this person was never going to turn. He fell to the ground and had a heart attack and he died. And the betrayal was that the Ahab character who had wormed his way into working in the bookshop set things up so he could go to the government, use the government, the council, whatever you want to call it, of the town, to ensure that the bookshop was shut down. So it apparently had moisture issues. Well, the wee girl who had been working in the bookshop, who had been also removed from the bookshop so she had no one left everyone was gone or so she thought went to the shore as she got on her boat and left this small island town she'd closed the doors of the bookshop she'd been what looked like defeated Looked like she'd been defeated. But as she as she sailed away, she looked behind the young girl and there was a fire. There was a fire. The young girl had set fire. To the bookshop. So the bookshop that was coveted, that everybody wanted and they did all they could. The Battle of the Bookshop. It's just burnt down to the ground. That was it. Burnt down the town. <laughs> they just spilled all the dog biscuit. And what I, what I find really interesting when I remember this is that it was only later that I had the dream about the girl and the, that came in and sat in the bathtub. 
and the Lord's word is that that's our sacred place and don't be tempted out of the bathtub by the wee girl. And in the dream I did go out of the bathtub. Oh sorry, out of the um, bathroom and I did follow her just to see what was, I don't know why, but in the dream I did. But when it got to the time where the sound, the hypnotic sound and everyone was basically just like a trance doing exactly as the system outside that bathroom intends us to do. And the religious ladies and their Midiite type, Amish type, pious prudish clothing ushered everybody down and they like followed into a place shaped like a cell a hectagon they came in the back and they're all just mingled and like tightly packed like in a mall like on a on a busy street very busy street and i came and i was in the back and it was when i was in the back that i I realised that everyone was shuffling forward and what was on the other side was the end. There was no way out of that. There was no way out. It was, I had a sense of dread, but I also knew that the reason why I knew that nobody should be going that direction, that this was just one big trap, was because of something I saw on the internet. So... I warned people, I said, I don't know what I was warning them, but in the dream I was warning them, and no one listened, and then the sound stopped, and when the sound stopped, everyone like just clicked out of whatever mesmerizing state they were in, and they all walked back to their individual homes and went into their individual bathrooms. so many images brought it's so it's broadcast so much this young girl you know, the basketballer that died I've never heard of him never ever heard of him just all I can say is just look out for that young girl look out for the young girl look at what the board they're broadcasting all the time about that young girl because god knows about that young girl that's why it's in my dream the young girl that comes into the bathtub cool just so many of my posts, it's it's interweaved into so many of my posts, this young girl. And it's I th I I believe it's one of the most powerful symbols they have. But God flips it. That's why I really want to encourage you to have a look at the movie The Bookshop. Because it's the perfect example that I believe the Lord has, he sewed it into the system, that book. That book, it was from a novel. I believe the Lord sewed things into the system to show us that we we shouldn't be overwhelmed and think, you know, well, he he, he has taken over. Well, he hasn't taken over, he, he created, this has always been his world. But don't be overwhelmed because... The Lord God has sewn things into the system, into the arts, and I suppose into politics. In the end, people will do the will of God, and whether they like it or not, they play into God's hands, and he glorifies it, and he 
he brings glory from it. So that book is a really special book, and I know I've rambled, and I, I don't think I've made my point. But I just, I just pray that you would pray about it. The Lord God put that book, which become a movie, into the hands of producers, and he released it in Greymouth, it's tiny wee theatre, just at the right time when I needed it, so that I could share this now. I just, um, I can't overemphasize how important it is. That you like take very seriously the things that the Lord has said to you. Like they're like stepping stones. <laughs> That's what I knew they were. They're like stepping stones that have brought me so far. And it's not the time that I spend thinking. It's not the time I spend thinking. And often it's not even the time I spend praying. It's every word, every vision, every dream, every ordained minute. Like when the Lord gives a song, when the Lord gives a movie, when the Lord brings up a YouTube video, when you hear a prophetic word, that is how the Lord God is speaking to us. So, But I, I just think that this book, this bookshop, this movie, the bookshop, is for everyone. It's got the girls, it's got all the characters in it. It's got the man who's representing the Father, Son, Holy Spirit on the hill. It's got the wee girl. The wee girl's not even in the Gospels. <laughs> but the wee girl is our answer. It's like the vengeance. It's The wee girl is vengeance. And it's vengeance in a twin system. So it can go both ways. And it looks like innocence. And it looks harmless. Like a lamb. Or the host body system of a wee girl. But the lamb is a lion. And the fire of God is something to be feared. Now someone makes a comment. And tries to curse me by saying that one of my dogs is dead. Is exactly the same as me being. Well, I I hunted down that fallen, fallen angel that came here and put a nail in Glory's eye, tried to take out Glory's vision. It's the same thing. They're capable of very cruel things. They have capable of a lot of cruelty. And that's what we're going to see more of. More cruelty, if, if it's even possible. So as things get darker... Ouch! As things get darker, darker so, in light, so the light increases. So that's the encouragement. And also, you know, God knows all about your little girl. God's already flipped it with the box shop. Vengeance is vengeance. The time is now, is God's word to your time's up. <laughs> anyway, I've rambled. <clears throat> Peace.